In this presentation, a type C malleolar fracture will be treated using open reduction and internal fixation. A type C malleolar fracture occurs when the foot is in pronation and an external rotational force is applied to the ankle joint, which leads to a cascade of injuries. The first injury to occur is a deltoid ligament rupture or a medial malleolar avulsion fracture. The talus rotates externally. It forces the fibula to twist about its vertical axis. The result is a rupture of the anterior syndesmotic ligament and then the interosseous ligament up to the level of the oblique fibula fracture. A fracture of the posterior malleolus is caused by the shearing movement of the talus. The internal fixation is performed with a seven-hole LCP one-third tubular plate using a lag screw through the plate. A position screw is used to secure the syndesmotic ligaments. In addition, a lag screw is used to fix the medial malleolus and a screw fixation of the posterior malleolar fragment from anterior is performed. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to outline the indications for surgical treatment, discuss the preoperative planning and patient positioning, and perform the surgical steps used for the fixation of a type C malleolar fracture. Indications for internal fixation of a type C malleolar fracture include articular fractures, displaced fractures, and unstable fractures. Preoperative preparation is essential. Clinically, it is important to assess the condition of the nerves and vessels, examine the entire fibula as there may be an associated proximal fracture. Radiographic examination includes lateral and mortise views of the injured ankle and views of the contralateral ankle to help with templating and recognize individual variations in anatomy. The patient is positioned on a radiolucent operating table in a supine position with supports under the hip. A sandbag under the ipsilateral buttock rotates the limb and allows lateral and posterolateral access. The first step is the reduction and fixation of the fibular fracture. The standard approach is a longitudinal lateral incision. A 10 to 15 centimeter straight lateral incision is made in line with the fibula. Care is taken to avoid injury to the superficial perineal nerve, which lies very closely anteriorly, especially in the proximal part of the incision. In more anterior incisions, it should be identified and protected. When dissecting posteriorly, Care is taken not to damage the short saphenous vein and the sural nerve. The required instruments for fibula reduction and fixation are the pointed reduction forceps, the toothed reduction forceps, the 2.5 mm drill bit, the 2.5 3.5 mm universal drill guide, the depth gauge, the hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve, and the 3.5 mm drill bit. Clinically, the pointed reduction forceps would be used to reduce the initial fracture displacement. The seven-hole LCP one-third tubular plate is placed onto the bone with the middle hole distal to the fracture. This hole will be used for the lag screw. Contouring is not necessary. A neutral hole is drilled through the third proximal plate hole close to the fracture using the 2.5 mm drill bit and 2.5 3.5 universal drill guide. The required length of the screw is measured with the depth gauge. The 3.5 mm self tapping cortex screw is selected and inserted using the hexagonal screwdriver. A final fracture reduction is performed over the plate 
using the toothed reduction forceps. Clinically, pointed reduction forceps can also be used from a mediolateral direction, however, this requires more soft tissue dissection. The 2.5 mm drill bit is used to drill eccentrically through the third distal plate hole. The depth gauge is used to measure the required screw length. The 3.5 mm self-tapping screw is inserted into the drilled hole, resulting in axial compression. As the eccentrically placed compression screws are tightened, the head moves down the ramp in the plate hole and compresses the bone together. The toothed reduction forceps is removed. The glide hole is drilled for lag screw insertion using the 3.5 mm drill bit and drill guide through the near cortex only. A thread hole is drilled through the opposite cortex using the 2.5 mm drill bit and drill guide. The required length of screw is measured using the depth gauge. The 3.5 mm self-tapping screw is inserted, functioning as a lag screw. All the remaining plate holes are filled, except for the second distal hole, which will be used later for the position screw. To facilitate access to the medial malleolus, the bone model is released from the clamp and rotated 180 degrees. The next step is the reduction and fixation of the medial malleolus. On the medial side, a medial approach is used. The approach is made through an anteriorly curved medial incision on the medial malleolus. The posterior tibial neurovascular bundle must be respected. The surgeon should be aware that the great saphenous vein and the saphenous nerve lie anterior to the incision. The required instruments include the large pointed reduction forceps, the 1.6 mm K wire, the 2.5 mm drill bit, the 2.5 3.5 mm universal drill guide, the depth gauge, the 4.0 mm cancellous tap, and the hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve. The fracture is reduced anatomically, clinically using pointed reduction forceps. A 1.6 mm K wire is inserted to secure the preliminary fixation. Take care to ensure that the K wire does not go through the joint. The 2.5 mm drill bit is used to drill a hole for the 4.0 mm cancellous bone screw parallel to the set K wire. The required length of the screw is measured with the depth gauge. The 4.0 mm cancellous tap with appropriate sleeve is used to create the threads. The 4.0 mm partially threaded cancellous screw is inserted with a washer to achieve interfragmentary compression. The K wire is removed. The hole for the second screw is drilled with the 2.5 mm drill bit in the same position as the channel of the previously removed K wire. The required length of the screw is measured with the depth gauge.
The 4.0mm cancellous tap with appropriate sleeve is used to create the threads. The second 4.0mm cancellous screw is inserted in the same manner as the first one. The next step is the reduction and screw fixation of the posterior malleolar fragment from anterior. For the purposes of the practical exercise, the reduction of the posterior malleolar fragment is held using the pointed reduction forceps. Clinically, this would not be done. Clinically, it is important to allow visualization of the tibia in order to avoid damaging soft tissue and neurovascular bundles during drilling and screw placement. A stab incision is made anteromedial in order to be perpendicular to the fracture of the posterior malleolus and L-shaped retractors are placed to gain visibility of the anterior tibia. The required instruments are the large pointed reduction forceps, the 3.5mm drill bit, the 2.5mm drill bit, the 2.5-3.5mm universal drill guide, the depth gauge, and the hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve. From anteromedial to posterolateral, a 3.5mm glide hole is drilled using the 3.5mm drill bit and the 3.5mm end of the universal drill guide. The 2.5mm end of the drill guide is inserted into the hole and the 2.5mm drill bit is used to drill the thread hole into the posterior malleolus. This is the lag screw technique. However, the 4.0mm partially threaded cancellous bone screws with 2.5mm drill bit technique can also be used. The depth gauge is used to measure the required length of the screw. The hexagonal screwdriver is used to insert the 3.5mm self-tapping cortical lag screw. The compression effect is clearly visible at the fracture line. If necessary, a second 3.5mm self-tapping cortical lag screw can be inserted parallel to the first to protect the fragment from rotation. The reduction forceps is removed. To facilitate the insertion of the position screw, the bone model is released from the clamp and rotated 180 degrees. To facilitate the insertion of the position screw, the bone model has been returned to its original position. In the clinical situation, the ankle is dorsiflexed for the insertion of the positioning screw. This ensures that the upper ankle joint is at its widest position. The screw should be inserted 2.5 to 4 cm above the anterior syndesmosis. The screw must be inserted at a 30 degree angle from the dorsal direction and parallel to the tibial plafond. Ensure that the syndesmosis has been reduced properly. A K-wire or pointed reduction clamps can be used for this. Using the 2.5mm drill bit and the appropriate drill sleeve, the three cortices are drilled at a 30 degree anterior angle and parallel to the tibial plafond. The depth gauge is used to measure the required length of the screw. A screw of about 36mm will generally be long enough. A 3.5mm self-tapping cortex positioning syndesmotic screw is inserted using the hexagonal screwdriver.
Here we can see the positioning screw parallel to the joint, the lag screw fixation at the medial malleolus, and the posterior malleolar fragment with screws inserted from anterior. You should now be able to outline the indications for surgical treatment, discuss the preoperative planning and patient positioning, and perform the surgical steps used for the fixation of a type C malleolar fracture.